Hello. In this video, I would like to introduce the Oppo Reno 10 Pro review. I trust that this video is very useful for all of you. When you have already watched the video, you know about Oppo Reno 10 Pro clearly and it helps you in making a decision to choose a better smartphone for your work and lifestyles. I will introduce to you the detailed Oppo Reno 10 Pro review that is important especially, alternatives, verdict, pros and cons at the end of the video. Please kindly enjoy watching the video as following. The Reno 10 series was launched in China back in May, and now Oppo is taking the family internationally, starting with Malaysia. The model should slowly be rolling out to European countries as well. There are a total of three Reno 10 models, the Vanilla, the Pro, and the Pro Plus. Straight off the bat, it is worth clarifying that the international models are somewhat different from the Chinese ones. Specifically, the Vanilla model and the Pro model have slightly different specs, while the Pro Plus is the same. Today, we have the Reno 10 Pro International version in for review. It is pretty different compared to the Chinese model of the same name, including its design and a bunch of its specs. The Malaysian Reno 10 Pro is essentially a mid-range to upper mid-range device based on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 778G chipset. In contrast, the Chinese model uses the MediaTek Dimensity 8200 chipset. The Chinese model seems to have a slightly better and larger 6.74-inch display, but the one on the international version is not shabby at all. It measures 6.7 inches, has 10-bit color with HDR10 Plus support and a 120Hz refresh rate with a peak advertised brightness of 950 nits. The international variant's charging rate has also been slightly downgraded from 100W on the Chinese version down to 80W. The battery capacity is the same at 4,600 mAh. The international variant also comes with slightly less RAM at 12GB instead of 16GB. Plus, the storage is of the slower UFS 2.2 variety instead of UFS 3.1. One thing that has not been downgraded is the impressive on-paper camera setup. The Reno 10 Pro's setup includes a 50MP primary cam, with OIS, 32MP telephoto, and 8MP ultra-wide cameras. There is a 32MP selfie camera on the front. Design As mentioned, the international Reno 10 Pro looks slightly different from the Chinese model. The design is pretty subdued yet distinct enough to be memorable. Of course, when we say that for a current day, slab, phone, we are generally referring to the camera island. Even though it does not exactly look like it in pictures, the camera island sticks out quite a bit. Enough so for the phone to wobble on a flat surface. For the most part, the camera island is colored the same as the phone's body, but it doesn't exactly flow naturally into the phone's back panel. The camera island looks a bit bolted on, for lack of a better term. A rather steep chamfer surrounds the whole island, which ties the design together nicely. Speaking of the phone's back side, it is nicely sloped on both sides. The curvature is comfortable to hold without any sharp edges or corners. The surface is entirely smooth with no texture and, unfortunately, gathers a lot of grease and grime. The Reno 10 Pro can be had in either silvery gray or glossy purple color options. We have the latter one in for review, and the color is pretty subdued with a pastel look to it. It definitely doesn't stick out and is not flashy at all. It can easily blend into any environment. Still, if you want a stealthier phone still, you should probably go for the gray version. The Reno 10 Pro uses a pretty standard, sandwich, three-piece construction. The rear and front sides both slope neatly into the relatively thin middle frame. The frame is color-matched with the rest of the body and has a glossy finish to it. Unfortunately, just like the back side, it gathers a lot of grease and dirt. 
the curvature of the front side of the Reno 10 Pro is pretty similar to the one on the back. The two sides of the phone are quite symmetrical. There is nothing particularly noteworthy about the front of the phone beyond that. The display bezels are reasonably sized, which is to say not too large but not what we would call small either. The same goes for the selfie camera punch hole. The Reno 10 Pro is a pretty thin device, measuring 162.3 by 74.2 by 7.9 mm. It is not particularly heavy either, weighing in at 185 grams. It is pretty well balanced weight-wise. Build quality. The Reno 10 Pro is a glass sandwich phone. Its back panel is made of glass. Unfortunately, Oppo does not divulge exactly what kind. The front side is also covered with glass. Oppo is using Asahi Glass AGCDT Star 2 glass here for protection. You do get a pre-applied plastic screen protector on top for some extra peace of mind. The middle frame on the Reno 10 Pro is made of plastic. Even so, it feels very sturdy. In fact, the same goes for the entire phone. There is no noticeable flex or hollowness to the chassis. It is well put together as well. Unfortunately, the Reno 10 Pro lacks any official ingress protection rating. That's definitely something that can be found in the same price bracket. Controls The Reno 10 Pro has a pretty standard control scheme. Well, perhaps, except for the IR blaster on the top side of the device, which is not something you see too commonly. Speaking of the top side, there is a secondary microphone in there and a rather sizable plastic insert. We aren't quite sure why it is there since the surrounding frame is also plastic. The volume rocker and power button are on the right side. Both buttons are quite thin but still easy enough to feel out. Unfortunately, beyond being thin, the buttons are also not too tactile in terms of feel. It's not a major complaint, though. The left side of the frame is entirely empty and uninterrupted. The bottom of the Reno 10 Pro is a bit busier. The dual nano SIM tray is here. In case you were wondering, there is no micro SD card slot. The main microphone and the USB Type-C port are also on this frame. The Reno 10 Pro, unfortunately, has just one bottom firing speaker, and that's it. A stereo speaker setup is easily attainable in this price bracket. The Reno 10 Pro uses an underdisplay optical fingerprint reader. It is quite fast and accurate. We have no complaints. Connectivity the Reno 10 Pro has global 5G multi-SIM connectivity. That includes both SA and NSA Sub-6 on both SIM slots, thanks to the Snapdragon X53 5G modem RF system. The Snapdragon 778G has a Qualcomm Fast Connect 6700 for local connectivity, which provides dual-band Wi-Fi X, Wi-Fi 6, and Bluetooth 5.2 with LE and Aptex HD support. The Reno 10 Pro supports GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, BDS and QZSS for positioning. There is NFC on board and an IR blaster, but no FM radio nor a 3.5mm audio jack. The Type-C port is backed up by a simple USB 2.0 data connection, which means a theoretical maximum data rate of 480 megabits per second. The USB port has OTG slash host capabilities but nothing fancy beyond that, like video output. In terms of sensors, the Reno 10 Pro has a Bosch BMI 26X accelerometer and gyroscope combo, an Oplus Fusion light sensor, an Oplus TCS3710 proximity sensor and an AKM AK0991X magnetometer and compass combo. The only major thing missing is a barometer. 6.7 inch 120 Hz, HDR10 plus AMOLED. The display is definitely the highlight of the Reno 10 Pro.
The phone is rocking a big 6.7-inch curved AMOLED panel. It has a resolution of 1080 by 2412 pixels, which means a pretty standard 20 to 9 aspect ratio and a pixel density of around 394 ppi. That's perfectly sharp in person. Oppo claims that the Reno 10 Pro should be able to do around 500 nits of typical brightness, 800 nits of maximum on the entire display and 950 nits of peak brightness. In our standardized testing, we measured 504 nits of maximum brightness and 793 nits maximum, so given the differences in testing methodology, the advertised numbers do check out. The phone even offers a special HDR brightness boost toggle for an improved HDR experience. Thanks to its AMOLED tech and perfect deep blacks, the panel on the Reno 10 Pro effectively has infinite contrast. It also gets very dim at a minimum brightness setting and only puts out 2.1 nits. The Reno 10 Pro has quite a few color modes. Vivid color mode is the default. It aims for the DCI P3 color space and covers it rather well, but it is not terribly accurate. It tends to be a bit cold overall. Then there is the natural mode. As the name implies, it aims for the sRGB color space and nails it with perfect coverage and accuracy. Cinematic mode is next and does an even better job than Vivid, covering the DCI P3 color space with nearly perfect color accuracy. Finally, there is Brilliant mode, which is a lot like Vivid in its color reproduction. We aren't exactly sure why Oppo decided to include it as well. The Reno 10 Pro has a 10-bit panel. That translates to less color banding thanks to the ability to reproduce a whopping 1 billion plus colors. The display is also HDR10 Plus certified. On a software level, the phone can decode HDR10, HDR10 Plus and HLG, but not Dolby Vision. We are also happy to report that it is certified for the highest possible Widevine L1 DRM, which allows streaming services like Netflix to offer up full HD streams to saturate the display resolution. Oppo has its own optimization engine baked into the Reno 10 Pro. It is called the Zero One Ultra Vision Engine and consists of two independent optimization systems. One is the Video Color Enhancer, which claims to intelligently identify common scenes in video and enhance their color and clarity. Then, there is Bright HDR Video Mode, which increases the screen's maximum brightness when playing HDR videos. Naturally, this will reduce the battery life and produce more heat. Interestingly enough, the Image Sharpener option, as seen on the Oppo Find X6 Pro, is nowhere to be found here. High Refresh Rate Handling The Reno 10 Pro has a total of three refresh rate modes. There is Standard, which just acts like a 60Hz lock. Then there are the High and Auto Select modes. Both tend to switch between 120Hz and 60Hz, depending on the circumstance. Technically, the phone does also support 90Hz as reported by software, but we never actually saw it trigger in practice. Both the 120Hz mode and auto select appear to have the same general behavior. It mostly boils down to triggering 120Hz while the display is being interacted with and then, after a few seconds of inactivity, switching down to 60Hz. This is fairly basic logic, but it generally works rather well to save unnecessary power draw. The phone does not appear to monitor motion on the display, but some interfaces and apps still run at a fixed 120Hz refresh rate without ever going down to 60Hz. That isn't the norm, but it still indicates that the refresh rate is sometimes and somehow dependent on the content that is being displayed. Regarding gaming, the auto select and 120Hz modes seem to behave identically as well. That is to say that as long as you are interacting with the display, the refresh rate is 120Hz, which quickly drops to 60Hz after a few seconds of inactivity. This is hardly the best behavior we have seen, 
but overall we can't complain too much about the high refresh rate handling on the Reno 10 Pro. Battery Life The Reno 10 Pro has a sizable, but not huge, 4,600 mAh battery on board. It makes sense, seeing that the phone is quite thin at 7.9 mm and pretty light at 185 grams oppo still managed to cram in quite a bit of battery capacity. The phone runs on a 6 nanometer Snapdragon 778G chipset, a well-known and popular chip that has proven decently efficient in the past. The Reno 10 Pro does all right in the battery department with a total endurance rating of 104 hours. That's about what we would expect from this battery and chipset combo, and it's decent but nothing to phone home about. As a reminder, the web browsing portion of our testing was conducted at the phone's top 120Hz refresh rate mode, while the video test part was done at 60Hz. Charging Speed The Reno 10 Pro supports up to 80W fast charging. Its primary charging standard is SuperVOOC though the phone also officially supports VOC 2.0, PD 3.0, 9V-2A, and QC 3.0, 9V-2A, obviously at a slower charging rate. The Reno 10 Pro ships with an 80W SuperVOOC charger in the box. The charger is clearly proprietary and supports 5V at 2A, 10W, standard USB power as well as 5V, 11V at 7.3A, max 80W, for SuperVOOC. You should probably hold on to the charger if you want to use the fastest possible charging rates on the Reno 10 Pro. The included USB Type-A to Type-C cable seems pretty standard, though, so it should be easy enough to replace if misplaced or broken. The Reno 10 Pro charges up quite rapidly with its included 80W SuperVOOC adapter. We got it from dead all the way up to 58% in 15 minutes, and a charge to 100% took exactly 30 minutes. The battery indicator might be a bit deceitful, though, since the phone continued to trickle charge for about 4.5 minutes after that, which means that a full charge technically took us 34.5 minutes. Speaker. The Reno 10 Pro only has a single bottom firing speaker at its disposal. That is quite disappointing, given that many of its price comparative competitors from other brands do offer very decent stereo speaker setups. Furthermore, the lone speaker on the Reno 10 Pro is not particularly impressive in any way. It doesn't get too loud, only managing an average score in our testing, and its output is nothing to phone home about. It gets the job done, but nothing really beyond that. It is called Real Sound Technology and comes with a total of three audio presets, plus a smart mode that promises to recognize scenarios and adapt the sound accordingly automatically. Android 13 and Color OS 13.1 on top. The Reno 10 Pro ships with Android 13 and the company's in-house ColorOS 13.1 skin on top. This is essentially the latest combo on offer from Oppo. Our unit runs an international ROM, meaning that Google Play services are present and seem fully functional. That includes things like Android Auto, Nearby Share, Google Backup and Google Location History, all of which tend to be problematic on Chinese ROMs. As far as bloat is concerned, it kind of depends on your definition. Oppo has plenty of its own on-house apps installed alongside their respective Google alternatives. Things like an internet browser, file manager, photo gallery and video player. There is even an alternative app store present. You will effectively have to pick and choose one of each and likely stick to that. Thankfully, pretty much all apps can be uninstalled. That also goes for the fairly large number of pre-installed third-party apps like Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon Shopping, Booking, Spotify, TikTok. There are some app recommendations here and there, which can be disabled as well. Always On Display is supported on the Reno 10 Pro, it can be power-saving, always on, or scheduled. And there's a lot of customization possible here.
Customizability is a common theme across all of ColorOS, really. There is an entire wallpapers and style page in settings, where in addition to the AOD settings, you can change wallpapers, live and static, switch to different icon packs, different quick toggles icon shapes, change fonts, there's an exclusive Oppo Sans, and choose completely different colors that will change the entire UI look. You can turn on off-edge lighting, which is independent of the always-on display. The launcher has no-nonsense home screens, a simplistic and clean notification slash toggles area, and an easy-to-use task switcher. An optional app drawer is available, too, and it is as clutter-free as one could hope for. Quick Glance is the leftmost widget pane here instead of Google Discover. The new launcher adds support for large folders and dynamic widgets. Any folder can be enlarged or shrunk. Dark Mode is available, and it does offer three different dark styles. There are many powerful tools within the settings menu if you want full control over your Reno 10 Pro. The features are wide-ranging but generally carried over from previous ColorOS versions. A host of screen-on and screen-off gestures are available, the smart sidebar is a handy pane of shortcuts you pull from the side, and split-screen and flexible windows are available. Multimedia apps such as photos, music, and videos all come courtesy of ColorOS. There is also a revamped file manager and a phone manager app to keep track of battery, storage, app permissions, and whatnot. Also, an in-house web browser. As mentioned, the Google alternatives for most apps are also preloaded. IR Remote app is also available, so you can make use of the IR Blaster right out of the box. Performance and Benchmarks Unlike its Chinese namesake, the international Reno 10 Pro is based on a Qualcomm chipset. The Snapdragon 778G 5G, to be exact. It's a 6 nanometers mid-range chip from 2021, which won't be winning any performance awards anytime soon, but it is still decently modern in features and has proven fairly efficient. Oppo has paired the chipset with a pretty liberal 12 gigabytes of actual RAM, extendable by up to 12 gigabytes more in virtual RAM. The 256 gigabytes of storage is also arguably enough for most users but be advised that it is not expandable since there is no SD card slot on the phone. It is also worth noting that Oppo has downgraded the storage speed on the Reno 10 Pro compared to the Chinese version. While the latter gets UFS 3.1 chips, the international version is stuck with UFS 2.2. In terms of performance optimization, Oppo has something called the Dynamic Computing Engine. It promises a smooth running phone after 48 months of use, as certified by TV. Apparently, the phone should be able to keep up to 40 apps alive in the background and has 16x memory access efficiency, whatever that means. Let's kick things off with some CPU testing and Geekbench. We can see that the Reno 10 Pro and its Snapdragon 778G hold their own well enough amidst the competition. The chipset isn't too far off from the likes of the Dimensity 1080, the Dimensity 7050 and the Dimensity 7200 in terms of raw power. Google's original Tensor chip inside the Pixel 6a and the Samsung Galaxy A54 with its Exynos 1380 chipset are in roughly the same ballpark too. And 2.2 is a much more compound benchmark that takes into account many aspects of a phone's overall performance and includes GPU and memory tests. We can see that the Reno 10 Pro fares reasonably well amidst its competitors. It performs roughly on par with devices like the Samsung Galaxy A54 and the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Pro and gets slightly outpaced by the Xiaomi Poco X5 Pro and the Realme 11 Pro. The Poco F5 sits at almost twice the performance of the rest of the devices thanks to the inclusion of the Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 chipset. It is the clear choice out of the bunch if you are after the best performance for your buck possible. 
you shouldn't really expect earth-shattering graphical performance from the Reno 10 Pro and its Adreno 642L GPU. It is about on par with the Samsung Galaxy A54 and its Exynos 1380 plus Mali G68 MP5 combo. On a slightly more positive note, you can expect slightly better performance than the Dimensity 1080 and the likes of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 12. It also performs better than the Realme 11 Pro and Pro Plus with their Dimensity 7050 chipset. 3D Mark and its generally more comprehensive graphical performance breakdown broadly paint the same picture. You can generally get a more performant device for your money if you are okay with shopping for an older model or you need to spend a bit more. Devices like the popular Samsung Galaxy A54 are generally in the same performance ballpark. Overall, you can expect enough power for casual games and even more graphically intensive titles if you tamper your expectations accordingly regarding GPU performance. The Reno 10 Pro is definitely not starved in the CPU department and can easily chew through any common task. Its UI runs smoothly with no noticeable slowdowns or hiccups. The Reno 10 Pro can get a bit toasty when under prolonged stress but is never hot enough on the surface to be uncomfortable to hold. It does lose quite a bit of its maximum performance over time to thermal throttling, but at least it does so fairly gradually without any sudden and jarring drops. This should ensure a smooth gaming experience, which is the important bit. A potent triple camera setup. One of the clear and main selling points for the Reno 10 Pro is a versatile and powerful camera experience. The phone has a trio of cameras on the rear, including a 50MP main cam with OIS, a 32MP telephoto and an 8MP ultra-wide. The 32MP selfie camera is also equipped with autofocus, making it that little bit more impressive as well. The only obvious omission in terms of versatility that we can spot is the lack of autofocus on the ultra-wide, so it can double as a macro cam. Let's go through the camera hardware the Reno 10 Pro is working with. At the helm, we have the 50MP main camera. It is based on the Sony IMX890 sensor. It is a quad Bayer unit with a January 1st 56 inch size and 1.0M individual pixels. It sits behind an f/1.8 lens, has multi-directional phase detection autofocus (PDAF) and is optically stabilized (OIS). We have pretty high expectations of this cam. Alongside it is a 32MP 2X telephoto camera which Oppo insists on calling a portrait telephoto, indicating its primary intended purpose. It is based on the Sony IMX709 sensor, another quad Bayer unit with January 2nd 74-inch size and 0.8M pixels. It sits behind an f/2.0 lens and has phase detection autofocus, PDAF. Finally, on the rear, we have an 8MP ultra-wide. It is based on the Sony IMX355 sensor with a 1-2.8 inch size and 1.14M pixels. It sits behind an f-2.2 lens and, unfortunately, has a fixed focus. The Reno 10 Pro doesn't skimp on the selfie camera. It was a bit harder to dig up hardware info on this camera, but it seems to either be based on the Sony IMX709 just like the rear telephoto or alternatively, the Samsung S5 KJD1SP, commonly known as the ISIS LJD1. More likely the IMX709. The important bit about the selfie cam is that it has autofocus. There's nothing too sophisticated about the default camera app, it is similar to what you'd find on any recent Oppo or Realme. The main camera modes are arranged in a typical carousel formation. Controls for resolution and aspect ratio are found on top of the viewfinder. Interestingly, there is no toggle for AI mode, which was present on other recent Oppo phones. Auto HDR settings are tucked away in the more submenu. Another thing missing here seems to be an auto macro mode. In fact, 
there is no dedicated macro mode in the camera app at all. You will find four toggles on the viewfinder, one for the ultra wide, one for the main 1x mode, and two zoom shortcuts, 2x and 5x. Although there's a dedicated night mode, we found that even in photo mode, there's night mode processing at play if the lighting conditions are met and all photos, default and night, are very similar. There's also a tripod mode within the night mode that uses longer exposure for better results. The night mode is supported on all three cameras. Oppo has brought pro mode support to all of its cameras. It gives you control over the usual stuff like ISO, exposure, white balance, manual focus, and shutter speed, up to 30s. There is also a histogram available. However, the Reno 10 lacks raw support and focus peaking, which are present on some higher-end Oppo devices. In terms of advanced video capture options, you only get HEVC. There is no HDR video capture on the Reno 10 Pro. Competition As of writing this review, the international version of the Reno 10 Pro that we are looking at is selling in Malaysia for around RM2199, $470-Euro430, and in India for about 39,999 Indian rupees, $490-Euro430, respectively. European listings are starting to pop up as well. Let's kick things off with Samsung and the popular Galaxy A54, which fits our budget nicely. A 128GB per 8GB model should run you just around 35,700 Indian rupees, while a 256GB per 8GB variant will run you about 38,988 Indian rupees. The Samsung does also offer expandable storage, unlike the Reno 10 Pro. It also brings IP67 ingress protection to the table and a brand name Gorilla Glass 5 protective finish on its display. Speaking of which, the A54 display is also 120Hz AMOLED, with HDR10 Plus support. Adding to that, the A54 is a well-rounded phone with stereo speakers, a large 5000 mAh battery with 25W charging, a 50MP OIS-enabled main, 12MP ultra-wide and 5MP macro camera setup and a decent Exynos 1380 chipset. As we usually do, we can't fail to mention the much cheaper Galaxy A34 as a viable alternative to get much of the way to the A54 experience on a much tighter budget. Unsurprisingly, there are plenty of viable options over in Camp Xiaomi. For slightly less than the Reno 10 Pro, you can get a Poco F5. Some of its highlights include IP53 ingress protection and Gorilla Glass 5, stereo speakers, a large 5000 mAh battery with 67W charging, a 12-bit, 120Hz, HDR-capable and much brighter AMOLED display, a more potent Snapdragon 7 Plus Gen 2 chipset and a pretty versatile camera setup with a 64MP OIS-enabled main cam. Alternatively, you could lower the budget quite significantly and go for something like the ever-popular Redmi Note 12 Pro. Despite its lower price, it still offers much of the same Xiaomi experience, including IP53, stereo speakers, 5000 mAh battery with 67W charging and a 10-bit, 120Hz, HDR AMOLED display. The Xiaomi Poco X5 Pro is another option quite similar to the Redmi with a Snapdragon chipset and better battery life, but also some concessions, like no OIS. Looking over to the BBK's roster, we can't help but point out the Vivo V27 Pro. It hasn't been enjoying massive popularity in our database, and it might be a bit harder to find for many. Still, it is a great choice for around as much or even slightly less than the Reno 10 Pro. It is hard to ignore the Realme 11 Pro Plus in that category. Its starting MSRP is less than 300 euros. All the while, it offers stereo speakers, 
a large 5000 mAh battery with a whopping 100W charging and pretty good battery endurance. It also has a large 6.7 inch, 10 bit, HDR10 plus, 120Hz OLED display, much brighter than the one on the Common 20 Premier. The Realme 11 Pro Plus has a very interesting camera setup in its own right with a 200MP, f/1.7, OIS enabled main snapper. Not too shabby at all, especially for the budget. Last but definitely not least, why not consider a Google Pixel? As long as a large display isn't pretty high up on your wish list. The new Pixel 7a would naturally be our first choice with its better 90Hz OLED display, 64MP main camera and nicer 13MP selfie. However, it's a pricier device than the Reno 10 Pro and closer to the 500 euros mark than the 400 euros one. The older Pixel 6a is far from outdated, though. Sure, you'll have to live with a 60 Hz refresh rate and, as mentioned, a much smaller overall display size, but the panel is HDR capable. The Pixel 6a also offers IP67 ingress protection stereo speakers and decent battery endurance. Its camera system is still world class, mostly thanks to Google's prowess in computational photography. And all of this, plus pure Android and very long software support, can be had for just around 330 euros or around 30,000 Indian rupees at current pricing. Our verdict. The Oppo Reno 10 Pro offers a decent enough package but one that is not free of flaws. The omission of things like stereo speakers and an ingress protection rating at this price point are major oversights. And even if these were present, the overwhelming sentiment surrounding the phone is that at its current pricing of around RM2199, $470 Euro 430, in Malaysia and 39,999 Indian rupees, $490 Euro 430, in India, it is just too expensive to truly be competitive. Prospective buyers are rightfully pointing towards the Snapdragon 778G chipset as well. While still offering a decent level of performance and fairly modern features, it is getting on in age and understandably putting off users. Having said all this, prices are always subject to change, and we need to try to evaluate the Reno 10 Pro as a product independently as well. In our opinion, there is still plenty to like here. It might not be as well-rounded of a package as most would have liked, but certain aspects of the Reno 10 Pro do still deserve some praise. For instance, while it could still be a bit brighter, its display offers excellent color accuracy and a great HDR experience. The 4600 mAh battery, while not the biggest pack around, still offers dependable battery life, and the Reno 10 Pro charges up very rapidly using its 80W Super VOC charger. And while it won't be topping any charts, the camera setup on the Reno 10 Pro is still quite versatile. We particularly enjoyed shooting with the telephoto. All things considered, with its current value proposition, we can't exactly bring ourselves to give the Reno 10 Pro an outright recommendation. There are simply better devices out there for your money. On a good deal, potentially in a few months, however, we can still see there being a viable place on the market for the Reno 10 Pro. Pros Modern and distinctive, but not over-the-top design, good build quality. Snappy and consistent fingerprint reader. Great color accuracy out of the box and good HDR experience. Dependable battery life and very fast charging. Pretty good all-around photo and video quality. The telephoto is particularly impressive. IR blaster and NFC on board. Cons. No rated ingress resistance. Just a single bottom firing speaker with unimpressive output. CPU is prone to throttling under high load. High refresh rate handling could use more work. Screen brightness could be higher. Despite its generally clean UI, ColorOS still has plenty of pre-installed apps. 
lackluster low light camera performance. Thank you for watching. See you next videos.